Jesse, it all probably feels a bit real now. Yeah, um, as I was just saying to you, I think it only started like settling in when the Instagram post went up and I was saying to my mum and dad that, you know, it didn't feel real up until then, but when you have people wishing you good luck and, you know, when you start leaving the club that you've played with the past two and a half years, it sort of kicks in. What does it mean to you reading what Pearl said and what Noel said? <laughs> I, I retweeted back to Pearl, like, I remember the post went up and I straight away texted her and just said, Pearl, I contact us, I'm sobbing. And, you know, when you see everyone writing such nice things about you, um, you know, it's a nice a nice way to go and uh, hopefully had a good impact on the club and the players and all because, you know, they've had a good impact on me. You packed a lot of living into your time at Falke. Do you believe how much you achieved in such a short window? Yeah, um, it's mad. Like, I was just watching, oh, I was reading the things that were said about it and, you know, when you won two league titles, a cup final, another cup final that, you know, we didn't get lucky on the day. It's a stunt in Champions League as well. It's a lot to be, have it done in two seasons. You know, the girls are going off Champions League this year and hopefully they go on and win the league as well. So it's a lot to be done in two seasons. And I think it only sort of felt real as people were saying, like, well done about it. So, you know, it's mad. You've probably been reflecting a lot over the last few days. That first game against Galway, that friendly, you've come a long way. What happened in that first game? Yeah, um, I started that game and it was my first game of senior level and I remember they were just so physical. Like, I was a baby going in. And I think her name was Rachel. She's off in Australia now playing Aussie Rose, so she was an absolute tank. And my first touch, she just cranked me and went through on goal. And I just remember saying... Um, I don't know like if I'm going to have a start position after this friendly went home and my dad in the car just being like what have I done but you know I sort of bounced back well after as Sean has said but you know it wasn't a good start to the senior career. It certainly then improved from there I mean some players the fact that they're versatile can be work against them they might be someone that's kept on the bench but you always made versatility your strength and your ability to play in every single position. That was something do you think really stood to you in your career at Chelsea so far? Yeah, definitely. Um, I always said to know, like, I'll play where you want me to play. Um, when I moved into the midfield, I was scoring goals and obviously that was helping the team. So he kept me there. And then this season, I asked him, can I play centre-back? And, you know, he done me a favour. But um, anywhere I wanted to play, I've always played and just done what's best for the team. That first season must feel particularly special the bond between the players and then to win the league in such incredible fashion, that kind of never say die attitude. I think what, at one point, 10, 11 points behind and managed to completely overhaul it. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, when I first came into Shells, the older girls took me under the wings and then I sort of got to know everyone and then we sort of bonded as a team. Um, so, you know, I just said the never say die attitude was incredible throughout the team. I remember Pearl just being like, girls, the only thing we can do now is just win all of our games and the rest is like in the p Mount's hand at that point. And, you know, we did what we needed to do and we were always there if there was going to be a slip up and lucky for us there was. You've been involved in a period of immense success, not just at Shelburne, but across the, the entire WNL. Sean Cook was speaking on the 1895 podcast and she talked about, you know, when she was playing, walking through car parks, it just never really felt like the football was elite, but the the processes around it weren't. How much have you made Talca Park your home as a player and, and your team now? Yeah, I've always said um, I'm so thankful for the girls that came before me to like get the opportunities of playing like in Talca Park and all that. But you know, I've always said this is home. It's every Saturday when you're coming up to Talca Park, you know you're going to be in for a bottle of a game. And we sort of made it our fortress, and we always go into the huddle saying we can't let anyone beat us in Talca Park. So coming here and the atmosphere around it, you know, the fans coming to the games, it's always just something nice and it's a great place to play every weekend. Special moments in Talca Park, I mean, there must be a few that stick out, particularly in that first senior season where we would score late goals and, and win games. Give me some of your favourite memories from the first season. Uh, so the first season, the standout one was the 4-3 game against Piemont here. I think they went 3-all in the 90th minute and... Amanda Budden hooved one up to Noel Murray and in the 96th minute she dinked over the keeper's head and we all sprinted to the corner. Um, and I think that, that was the moment where we sort of connected with the fans as well because they all came running down to the corner and, you know, there's a great atmosphere around this. So I think that sort of made an impact for the rest of the seasons and we, get, we got more crowds and connected with the, as it was, men's fans, but now it's just the club fans. Obviously that Bowls game as well, is a late goal in that one here? Yeah, 
uh, it was incredible because I remember I was waiting at the back post for her and I was screaming at Pearl to pass me the ball because, you know, I love Pearl, but she's not the type to score goals like that. She always scores her ahead, but, you know, when I went in the goal, it was just a massive relief. Uh, um, relief and we all went over to the corner and jumped all over Pearl, but, you know, there was a few goals like that that season. I remember Kiva scored against Sligo to make it 1-0 and, I don't know, it's just incredible. It's a great team. People always talk about a never say die attitude and we have it and it's almost like a football cliche but your team always had it like they played to 93, 94th minute. It always felt like no matter what was happening there was that bit of a drama twist or turn left. Yeah I think so. Um, it comes down to Dave the fitness coach as well. He has us fit and willing to go on for the whole 90 minutes but um, you know I think it's the belief as well of the team like if we go one goal down we know that we can score like two more to get ahead of them so I think it's the belief as well in the team. Coming into that second season as champions you have the, the Champions League to look forward to what was that second season like? Yeah um, I think we bonded as a team more in the off season then because you know we won the league and we had the belief that we could go on and win the league again because we were crown champs but um, we always knew that each game was going to be difficult because you know they were coming to the Tolka Park and we were the champions so even the teams that wouldn't be playing well the weekend the weekend before they'd come be, become Barcelona against us so you know we always had a tough game. When you look at that year like it's it's easy to look at how it ended with the league win and it was so comfortable down in, in Wexford, like just swept them aside. But there were challenges that year and I remember, you know, when there were a few tricky results and, you know, a lot of soul searching going down in that loan. Again, you talk about that never say die spirit, but there was a real belief that no matter what was thrown at you, you would overcome it. Where did that come from? I don't know. I remember that game down that loan. Um, it was on TG Carter and there was a bit of drama after because we were out on the pitch together. And, you know, no, he wasn't giving out to us, but we were just chatting, but we always do it at the end of games. And I think that was the sort of motivation, like we didn't want that feel never again. And I remember, I think it was the DLR game towards the end of the season, and Pearl was just like, we win these next five games, we win the league. So I think it's having the sort of belief from your captain and the sort of motivation to being like, you know, five games and you win the league. If you tell a team that, they'll do everything they can on the days to play the games. And, you know, we went down and won the five games and won the league. It says a lot about the group that you could probably be forgiven for, you know, saying, oh, we've lost so many players, it's so difficult, it's so tricky, you know, maybe it's not going to be our year. No matter who was lost, no matter who moved different clubs, there was always a belief that, you know, you do it. You never look for easy excuses. Yeah, we've always said that we lost girls in the first season and the second season too, but we've came together as a team um, and I hope the girls do that this year as well when I'm gone. But um, you know, it's it's a thing that we do because we're so close together. We just there's always players in the bench to fill in the gaps, and we have to believe in the team again. And um, you know, we just come together as a little group and face any challenge that comes before us. So I guess then the end of that 2022 season probably about as good as it gets. Yeah, and um, the last game in Wexford, I remember, I scored just before half time, and then in the second half, I looked around at Pearl, we were training up, and I goes Pearl. Like, what's going on? She was like, stay, but we just won the lake. Like, there was about 10 minutes left and we were all just in shock because of, you know, we won the league, the fans were getting louder and it actually just felt real. Not only you won the league, but in such style, like, Wexford had been brilliant at home all season. They hadn't leaked a whole lot of goals. They had a mean defence. But to be able to just turn up when all the pressure was on you, there's a title on the line, and to win in such comfort, like, it didn't look like there was any nerves there. Yeah, we were shocked. I'm like, obviously, Wexford always give us a good game, and it was a tough game down there. But I think we all just stepped up to the occasion, and it's probably one of the best nights ever. Europe as well. We we couldn't go beyond twenty twenty two without reflecting on that uh, adventure in Slovenia. How was that? Yeah, I remember when we won the first game one 0 It was just like, what can we actually go on to do here? Um, and the other teams were staying in the hotel, and obviously. You could see their, you know, full time athletes and you know, by the shape of them, the height of them and all, but I think we still had the belief going into the second game that we could, you know, put a marker down here, but I hope the girls go on and do some that little bit extra this year. When you reflect on all the mad things that happened over your your spell at shells, we haven't even had a chance to talk about Heather O'Reilly or Ireland. <laughs> What's your reaction when that gets popped into the WhatsApp group that a World Cup winner, an Olympic gold medalist, the most capped player of all time is coming to talk? Yeah, we didn't have a clue who was coming. Um, 
and Pearl put something into the group chat, I think it was, or Becca, and she knew who it was, and we were all guessing, and no one could, like, no, obviously no one's going to go to Heather O'Reilly, but um, she came down to training, and, and it was like, hi guys, in a big American accent, but it was, like, surreal, because you just didn't know what way to approach her, whether, like, she'd just be normal with us, or, you know, if she's going to train the same, but she was an incredible person, and, you know, put the work in, and, like, all the rest of us, and she had to fight for her position in the starting 11 as well. When you talk about being a sponge and learning from players like Rachel, Pearl, Noel, I'm sure you picked up one or two things from Heather O'Reilly too. Yeah, of course. You know, I call the girls the oldie goldies, but, you know, they don't mind me calling them that. Um, but apart from Heather, obviously you're going to learn loads more and she answered any questions you needed. But, you know, Pearl, Rachel, Noel, you know, you can learn so much from them. And playing beside Pearl is why I keep going back to her. I'm a little version of her, I like to call it, but... Um, I've learned so much from the girls and when I played in midfield with Rachel Graham you know you can just only learn from them because they're incredible players and they have a wealth of knowledge. When you kind of reflect on that time like it'd be easy again for that to turn into a media circus there's all eyes around Heather I remember the, I think your first game was in Sligo away and there's a camera crew like literally following her around for the whole day and when she was warming up on the sideline they were they were watching her did that ever distract the players or was it easy to just keep the mind on the business? I think we just treated her as a normal player at the end of the day, but we did get, we ended up losing that day, but, um, you Not know, up, I think. yeah, yeah, um, but I think we just treated her as a normal player because she was a normal person at the end of the day, um, so I don't think it let us, like, let it distract us. When you get to the cup final then, how many lessons did you learn from the previous year where, obviously 2021, it was the, the league no one expected except for, I'd say, your dressing room because it yeah. just seems so unlikely that that reverse would happen. You celebrate 2021, the cup final doesn't go your way in 2021. 2022 now, you celebrate in Wexford, but there's a determination for that cup final then in Tala. How much did you learn from losing the cup final in 2021 when it meant winning in 22? Yeah, I think the big thing was because the 2021 season came with such a shock, we celebrated almost too much and in the 2022 season, we celebrated winning the league, but we were like, right, we can celebrate both after we went go out and win the cup final and do the double. And um, so we always had it in the back of our mind. So like, I think we went out and recovered well and prepared well during the week for, it, and then we got to celebrate both after we like done the double. So it was more the lesson of not celebrating the league too much, which is you know bittersweet, but we did the celebrating in the end. Yeah, winning that that cup must have felt very very special. And player of the match as well, I think the first year. Yeah. That must have been great. Yeah. Oh, it was in my second year. Your second but, yeah. year. So winning year. Player. Yeah. So um, I actually scored at my back that day, but I remember everyone played incredible that day um, up against that loan. Probably wasn't one of the prettiest matches, but we all did what we needed to do to, you know, win the game. And I think I could have gave the player the match to any of the girls on the team. So I was, you know, very grateful to get it. But it was a sort of team effort and all 11 of the girls deserved player the match. It's the kind of thing where there's so many people behind the scenes that work with the team. I know you mentioned Dave O'Connor there from the strength and conditioning side. It really does take a village. Like There's so many people who have been a part of the story, but maybe not always get the credit they deserve. Yeah, especially Dave. You know, he'd bring you, or he'd meet you at the gym if you wanted to. You'd do extra running sessions outside of training, but then you also have the likes of Donna, Gordon and Liam in the back room staff, uh, Joey, Noel, Kieran, who's you know, not only a coach, but he's a player in training these days. But uh, yeah, I can go through every single one of the staff and, you know, I thank them all with my whole heart. What's your dad going to do on Saturdays now? <laughs> he, he would still come to the matches probably. <laughs> he's been such a big support to you. It must be amazing to be able to share some of your best days at Shells with him right beside you. Yeah, he comes to all the games and Shells stands behind the goal. So, you know, sometimes we celebrate with him and I remember the day we won the league against Wexford um, in our fourth season I scored my second goal and I ran over to him not to give him a hug or anything but I wanted to find out what score the P-Mount match was <laughs> but like to know he's always going to be behind the goal is you know a really nice feeling he was up to date he had the score ready for you <laughs> yeah he did I went over and he was like Jesse it was like I don't know 3-1 at the time or something we were like no way hardly but you know it was great to know. Yeah, great to have uh, another extended <laughs> member of the background team. At the end of that first year, you win all before you. People always say it's better to go out on top. You had options to leave. You felt it was important to stay. Why was that? 
yeah so obviously when a big team like rovers comes in it's going to turn a lot of people's head and you know they have loads of money they have the facilities to like they have everything there that you want if you want to improve as a player as well but um you know we went out we won the league we won the cup and we have such a tight-knit group um, and there's a few things that we needed to tweak with the club and you know uh, as we met rovers and just to see the options or whatever um when we went to the club in Pearl, they sorted everything out straight away. And I remember once that everything was sorted and we got to go ahead, I text Pearl, or I was chatting to her and I was just like, Pearl, I want to play for Shelbourne. Um, I thought I had like a nice connection with the fans as well. I, I feel like they love me, I love them. And I sort of wanted to go out on a nice stunt with Shells because I, I knew this day was going to come. And I was talking to my dad about it and I was saying, if I played for any other club in this league, I don't think I'd be able to give as much as I do for Shells. You know, I turn around to Pearl and 88 minutes, she's like, stay but come on, just last five minutes. And I don't think I'd be able to do that for anyone else in the league. And especially if I was to play against Shelbourne, I think it'd be the worst game of my life. But, uh, you know, I think I, it, the decision came because I love the club so much and I love the fans and everything everyone's done for me. And I just have that sort of little home feeling with Shelbourne. So it was... I wanted to leave something nice at the end of the day because we knew this day was going to come but I wanted to sort of go out as a, not a legend, but you know, with a good reputation with Shelburne. And the fact that, you know, you look at the dressing room, you're not leaving a club declining, it's a club still at the peak of yeah. its power, it's still with brilliant young underage talent coming through, you just look at the likes of Hannah Healy, Rebecca Devereux, there's loads of players of that calibre. So it's the right place to be was it important for you for from that legacy perspective that you know this is your club it'll always be your club other challenges are other challenges but here's where you want it to be even if it was for six more months yeah 100 percent um it's always going to be my club and i remember just talking to pearl about it and i just told her i, I want to play for shelbourne it's my club and i was talking to my dad when the sort of decisions were coming about and you know, I love the girls. I love everything they can do for me off the pitch and on the pitch. So I have that sort of passion for the club as well. And then seeing the players that were coming in, like Anna Healy, who's an absolute baller. And then having the all the goalies, as I say, and then everyone in between. You know, it's such a family of a club. So they give you that drive and they make you just wear your heart and your sleeve when you're out on the pitch on a Saturday. Do you have a favourite goal you scored? Um, I'm going to say either the first goal in the league against... Wexford to win that day in 2022 or I think during that season we beat P-Mount 1-0 as well and it was the day we saved Talca Park and I celebrated in front of the fans but you know every goal was important and a lot of my goals were more important than others but I think them two are my favourite. That was such a big thing as well because the team I don't know if you realise it but you're so instrumental in, in saving Talca Park because when the Daily Mount thing was still on the table, it was just not going to be possible for four senior teams to play there. And no one wanted to be in a place where anyone had to play in the AUL or anyone had to play in the Oscar Trainer. So it, it, you're an important part of history as a team who helped save Chalk Park. How does that feel? Yeah, it's mad. You know, obviously the fans and the club do so much for us. So even knowing that we've helped out in the slightest is a very nice feeling. But I think we all did little extra bits out and outside the football ground to help the campaign as much as possible and you know the day when we beat P-Mount and we had the flags and we were like ambassadors for us so I think it's very nice to know that we were a small part to play in it. It's strange when fans become your friends but it feels like that's something that's probably happened to this group of players over the last two years. Yeah definitely you know when I first started out with Shells they were so-called men's fans but like I'm leaving now with a load of fans who come to the game with flares and you know, when we played Wexford down there, they had the atmosphere so good. And it's in the last five minutes of the game when you look over at them and they're like just chanting, they have the flares and they, like, they're like they giving you that little push of motivation. It's incredible. I think it was Karen Duggan did an interview on Off the Ball a while ago and she just said, um, players hate playing shells because they're just not used to that. As good as they are on the pitch, they're not used to that in the stands, they're not used to a crowd, They're not. it can be intimidating. It's kind of your, your 12th woman every yeah. week to have those fans there because no matter whether it's home or away, they were behind you non-stop. No, definitely you need it. And, you know, we want the same sort of equality as the men's game and that's what comes with the men's game. So if we have this sort of fortress and we have the fans intimidating the players, you know, obviously it's not nice, but then for us, it's given us the help. So we appreciate all they do for us. What do those three castles on your shirt mean to you? 
everything. I absolutely love this club with my whole heart. They'll always be my home. Teammates, you probably waited two years to leave one in on them. Easiest to wind up. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna go away. Nah, it's probably Nadine. Yeah? Yeah. Is she, she a bit cranky? No, she just she gives it back but she like she she laughs it off but it's very funny. Who's the best banter? Alex. Straight away Alex. Yeah. And Noel as well, but Alex is up there. Worst banter. Uh, oh this is a sticky one, I'm gonna get in trouble. Um I'll give it to Megan, she's dry. She's dry, but I love her. Who doesn't look in the mirror before going on a night out? Someone of ours has got you clever. <laughs> Who would I go with? Who is dodgy style? I don't know, that's a hard one. You're not going to give it to anyone? You love them all too much? Everyone actually has a decent sense of fashion. No, I'll skip that one. Most skillful? Noel, Noel. absolutely. Noel. Best trainer? Um, probably gonna give it to Kerry or Gemma Quinn. Who makes you laugh the most? Alex. Or Rachel Graham, she has them little one-liners that'll just make you laugh for days. The last person you want to be stuck to on a bus to a faraway place, <laughs> Linfield. Um, I'll go with Nads because she always brings porridge to away games and it always ends up spilling everywhere. <laughs> most likely to get you arrested on a night out? Um, Noel, Perlo, Alex, or Nads. Who's the hard one? Perlo. Who's the first person to slide into Andy Fitz's DMs after a match? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Look at the photos. Yeah, absolutely. I text him straight away after he knows what I'm coming for. So you're definitely number one? Yeah. Who's the wannabe manager? Megan Smith and she got the 16 shop. <laughs> Who thinks they're funnier than they are? Um, Amanda McCullough. I love her, but she's great. Who has the weirdest hobby? Hobby? Um, What's something they do in their uh, spare time? A lot of the men's team fish, which is a weird hobby. Yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting half the team here. Um, Gemma Quinn does Mai Tai sometimes. She's in Bali right now doing Mai Tai. So, it's interesting having yeah. breaking people up with your shins. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably give it to that. And that's it. Jesse, well done. Thank, Thank you, you for everything.